Tesla is off to another really good start this morning, going counter to the market. The market is uh, tending down and Tesla is tending up. We always like to see that. I gave a bunch of reasons for that last night. Larry uh, Goldberg and I discussed those reasons. If you want to take a look at that uh, video last night, uh, just go down below and, uh, you know, click on the uh, on the uh, uh, on my channel. And all those videos are there if you want to take a look at that. Anyway, uh, we have got a, uh, uh, you know, a Fed coming, a Fed story coming up tomorrow. We'll be. They'll be deciding what to do about interest rates, and no one expects them to cut tomorrow. And there's a, but there's a wide range of opinions on what are they going to signal about their intentions going forward. The bond market changed direction yesterday, and it continued its rally today with yields on the 30 trending down back towards 4% again. However, the shorter term treasuries are still very high, and they don't seem very likely to move significantly lower until the Fed actually cuts. And that is not going to happen tomorrow. Meanwhile, inflation seems to have crashed through 2% on multiple, multiple reporting agencies are showing this, including the three-month and the six-month PCE indexes, which are the ones that are most often cited by Chairman Powell as the indicator that he pays the most attention to. So what I'd like to do this morning first is go through the Trueflation report this morning and see what the Fed is seeing. They say they look at this report, and I think that it's wise from time to time to check out exactly what the Fed has available to look at as they make this decision. So immediately what you can see is that the overall inflation rate, as reported right now by Trueflation, is at 1.76, down another 0.05 today. You can see that the trend is decidedly down. You can see where it was a year ago, uh, where you can, you can see right now what's happened just in the last month or so, how fast it's trending down. This is the main thing. Again, the, the Fed, Chairman Powell has said, he has mentioned trueflation. He knows about trueflation. He's watching trueflation. All right, so let's take a look at some of the categories, though, here. Let's start with the number one, uh, food and non-alcoholic beverages. You can see that's down across a, a yesterday, a week ago, a month ago, down strongly versus last quarter. Let's take a look at the chart. You can see the trend on the, you know, the very thing that we look at when we go to the grocery store. And you can see that where we are here, I know this is small. I'm sorry. Let's see if I can make this any bigger. I'm going to just give it a try here. Yeah, that's a little bigger. Okay. So what we can see here is food away from home is up. Okay. That's the one that's killing us. But when you look at the rest of the food category, the rest of the food category is trending down around 2% at this point. So this is the one that would be the most important in terms of looking at what the Fed, Fed is seeing. Then we can go on to the next category, which is housing. This is a big, big category. You can see overall on housing, zero, zero versus last month, slightly up on housing. But you can see overall right now, the overall is this dark blue line. It's sitting at about 3% overall. And you've got, uh, uh, you know, the, the owned housing is much higher. Rents are way down here. Um, and, the, and the overall trend is a right about as I said, about, I think we could say that that is three and a half, closing it on 4% on the overall trend. Okay, let's take the next one. Look at transport. Transport down yesterday, down versus week ago, down versus last month. And you can see again how the chart is about flat for the year, but now trending down over December and January for all of transportation. Now we can go again to the next one, which is utilities. Utilities zero versus yesterday, year over 2.43 versus last month, down over a percent over the last quarter. And again, you can see we're sitting overall at about uh, about 4%, maybe 3% on that one. You can go on to the next one, which is health. Health, slightly up. We knew this was going to happen because there was a change in the way that they uh, uh, rate health 
uh, in terms of inflation. So you can see it went up, but now it's been flat for two months. This was based on that change in the way that they're that they're hand, not the, the way true inflation is doing, the way the government's handling the uh, the uh, inflation on health. And so, but now it's been flat once it uh, that change was taken into consideration. Now you've got household durables and daily and daily use items down versus last quarter. Huge trend down on durables. Uh, we're down uh, right around two and a half, three percent total on that one right now. You've got alcohol and tobacco down versus a quarter, down, down, down. Again, a steady trend all the all the way this year. This one has been one that has been a little sticky, sitting at around three and a half percent, according to that chart right there. Clothing and footwear down again, down versus last quarter. As you can see, you can see the trend line here. We got that one down actually in negative territory, down negative 1%. And let's go on to the next one. We have got communications down versus the quarter, down versus the month. You can see the overall trend down, and you've got this one now sitting at negative two percent as well. You've got so these are these are deflationary now on those last two. You've got education down versus the, all of these showing quarterly down. You see the trend line is down here. This is now down to around a little bit over three percent on education, and then we have recreation and culture. Whoops. Recreation and culture is at, again, down for the month, down for the quarter. Overall, sitting at around 2.75%. And then finally, let's take a look at the what they call the other category. This is has a lot to do with personal care items and whatnot. Down last month, down the quarter. Very big drop off here. And now sitting at... This one has been one of the ones that's been one of the more sticky ones. It is now down around 5% overall. Anyway, that gives you an idea of where all this is going. Uh, it gives you an idea of what the Fed is looking at so that as we hear from the Fed tomorrow, we'll have a better idea of, of how they're making their decision. To me, uh, what we're seeing is overall a tremendous downward trend and it's time to obviously cut rates. That's I know you know my opinion on that. Okay, this is Randy Kirk. Uh, if you like what we do here on this channel, please hit the like button. It just takes you a second. Just poke that like button, hit subscribe, notify, all that kind of stuff. Notify, why? Brian White will be joining me this morning. We'll be talking about the Optimus timeline. Now, I know I've been talking about the Optimus timeline for a week right now. We've had a lot of information coming in about this. But as you know, Brian has feet on the ground. So you're always going to get a different look from Brian with regard to these kinds of things. You'll, and we have Nicholas Gibbs coming out, coming up this afternoon, later this afternoon, and he'll be bringing us Good News Tuesday. And then Larry Goldberg has uh, just agreed to uh, join me tomorrow right after the Fed speaks, right after, uh, uh, it'll probably be around 1230, well, let's call it one o'clock California time tomorrow. We will, uh, you'll be able to get Larry's take on what the Fed uh, has had to say about their decision uh, this month and how they made their decision and how that's all happening. All right. And of course, you know, you need to get a Cybertruck bottle opener. Sales have, I have to admit, gone totally into the tank, except for on, on Amazon, still selling there. But you all seem to have only one of them is Christmas gifts. Don't you buy birthday gifts? <laughs> anyway, help yourself to a Cybertruck bottle opener. Uh, you know the deal. You've got one day left with the $20, no matter how many you buy, offer. And then they're going to go back to $25. All right. Anyway, Sawyer Merritt says this morning, for the first time ever, the Tesla Model Y is e officially the best-selling car overall in the world in 2023. 1.23 million units total sold. This is the first time an EV took the number one spot in global sales. What's crazy is that Model Y production started only four years ago. Now, while others have already claimed that the Model Y was the best-selling car in the world in 2023, tonight we received Toyota's official 2023 sales data to support the claim, which is why he is now finally reporting it. So there you go. And what I'm thinking about here, and you know, again, if you watch this channel, you know my thoughts on this. 
that Model Y is nowhere near saturated the market. A lot of people say, well, man, 1.23 million. Are you kidding me? It's, it's done. It's over. How, how are we going to sell more than that? But the Midwest of the United States, the I mean, not just the Midwest. I mean, you could go to places like North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, you know, the South, go over even to Texas, all the Southwest. I mean, basically California is at something like 12% uh, penetration with, between the Model 3, Y, all the models, around 12% penetration. And Tesla has like one or 2% penetration in places like Alabama, Tennessee. I mean, these places have a lot of available uh, market available there. And no, we've already shown you the video. We've shown you the information earlier. They Yes, these states sell more trucks that, uh, as a on a percentage basis than California, but it isn't a huge percentage, okay? We're talking about 25%, 20%, 18 you know, percent, massive amounts of sedans and SUVs still being sold all across these states. It's just a matter of getting these folks to start coming up uh, in the S-curve. All right, Tesserati says, Tesla China's domestic sales in January seem to be on a steady rise with new vehicle insurance registrations reaching 12,800 in the week of January 22 to 28 this year. The results represent a 9.4% improvement from the 11,700 registrations that were tracked in last week. Is a very strong big, uh, 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 number for the very first month of the quarter because, as you know, Tesla tends to export from China in the first uh, month of the quarter and even into the next two weeks. Sawyer Merritt, again, he's saying that uh, Biden's energy secretary, Jennifer Granholm, said this about Tesla. Their uptake has been amazing. They've accounted for a huge percentage of the increase in EV sales. People just love driving the car. This is from the from the from the Biden administration. Oh, is this an election year? What's going on here? I don't know. All right, Gary Black says Tesla's 2025 PE. Or in other words, this is the forward-looking PE, not the not based on the current uh, earnings reports, but rather the forward-looking is now at 44 times the street's estimate for the 2025 earnings. 20, yeah, 2025 earnings. This is the lowest PE since the 2023 first half bounce at 170%. Um, 2024 volumes, 2.1 million plus 17% year over year. And auto gross mar margins, first quarter, 16.6 increase estimated. Expectations are now very low. Tesla can go much higher if they don't cut EV prices again. Well, today is the 30th of the month of January. They have not cut or raised prices the entire month. It looks to me like there's a, a one month in the bag where higher margins are probably in place. Holmar's blog says this morning, if Elon Musk figured out how to get regulatory approval to launch thousands upon thousands of satellites into space, he got the regulatory approval to implant a chip in someone's brain and then he got uh, the uh, regulatory approval to be the first company to get 100% foreign owned factory in China. He says, maybe he'll be able to figure out how to get regulatory uh, approval for robo taxis <laughs> throughout the world. Okay. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they, they know how to do this as a company. He also says on another subject, he says, Tesla is our very, our very respected industry peer. He is quoting Yun, I can't, this guy's last, first, anyway, Mr. Lee of BYD, uh, I, I forget what his position is. Uh, he's not the CEO. Anyway, he says, Tesla is our very respected industry peer. It is also our client. Of course, they sell batteries to Tesla. I think this market is very large. It's not that we must surpass Tesla or they must surpass us. Instead, BYD and Tesla together or more new energy vehicle brands together. We need to think about how to increase the new energy vehicle total. He says cake. <laughs> of course, we say pie. He says cake. So that's nice to hear that they're looking at it the way that Tesla is looking at it. This is all BEV makers win, not a competition between BEV makers. I know it's hard to think that way. We're competitive spirits and we want our team to do better, but that's how Tesla looks at it. 
And it's nice to see that BYD is looking at it that way too. From Dives Tech, this is, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. he says, yes, this is on uh, X, of course, D-I-V-E-S Tech. Um, GM delivered strong results, better than expected 2024 guidance. This was important an important quarter to help regain the street's confidence that has been shaken the last few quarters with EV vision in flux and Cruz's black eye. GM said it would spend $1 billion less on Cruz than in 2023. So there's a billion that'll go right to the bottom line. And then we've got uh, from Krasenstein also on uh, X this morning, having opened two media organizations over the last 11 years, one in tech and another in politics, I can tell you three unfortunate truths. And I have been dealing with the media for my entire career, which you know started somewhere just after the uh, dinosaurs became extinct. This is 100% true. That's why I'm reporting it to you. Number one, clicks trump quality. You can have the he says, crappiest article in existence with a few sentences of substance, as long as the 10 word title generates the clicks so that people see the ads and generate revenue. Some of you have accused me from time to time of clickbait. I, have, I, I try my best never to say anything in either my title or my thumbnail that I'm not going to report on in my article. That would be completely wrong. If I ever do that, call me on it. But I, I try to say, I, I, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to make it seem emotionally interesting and exciting, and I might hyperbolize a little bit in order to get you to look. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. This is what works. I am shocked all the time. Some of the most important stuff, my most important videos, the ones that I think will impact your your future in terms of as a stockholder or as a someone who loves Elon Musk and loves the companies and all this kind of stuff, the ones I think are critical Somehow the title doesn't get it done. Somehow the thumbnail doesn't get it done. He's 100% right about this. Number two, deceiving titles are viewed as okay. The general rule of thumb is that as long as the article is accurate, it's okay if the title is deceiving click cliffhanger. The problem is that most people on social media only read the deceptive title and perhaps the opening paragraph and too lazy to read the entire article. It's not about being lazy. We have limited amounts of time. I don't care who you are. I probably read a thousand headlines a day. That's probably a minimum, maybe more than that. Because why? I'm doing this all day long, eight, nine hours a day. I'm reading headlines. I can't read all of those articles from the beginning to the end. And so I look at the headline. I probably look at a subheadline. And if it's interesting at all, I look inside. But that headline infects my brain. Okay. And so, yes, and I admit, I'm going to energize the title. I'm going to give it, you know, some pizzazz because otherwise you're not going to look. Nobody's going to look. It's the only way you can survive in this business. Number three, speed trumps accuracy and quality. The articles that are shared the most are the ones which are written first. By the time a quality-driven 1,000-word article can be written about a story, 10 other outlets have already published a 100-word blurb that has been shared 50,000 times and has gained all the traction. And so that's where you've got the problem is you're too late. You 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 spend time. It takes, I would say, for a thousand word article to be done well, if you know the subject matter, if you're a subject matter expert, it takes about two hours to write a thousand word article that has any quality, any depth, any true understanding. And if it's a breaking art, a breaking news story, you're already late to the party. You're not going to get the numbers. That this is how this is how things work today, and it's one of the reasons why why X is so critical is because on X you've got the breaking news. Yes, you're only getting that hundred words. You're only getting you know 144 characters, but now you get more. Uh, you're tending to get more thoughtful people and people that are um, become if they're not already experts becoming experts, and you can it's it's just easier and faster. That's I spend. I, on the, putting this article together, on putting this show together every morning, I spend about 20 minutes of my hour and 10 minutes in preparation. I spent about 20 minutes of that in in uh, X. That's where I spend the time because that's where I get the most meat, not the most headlines, the most meat 
the most quality. All right. All right. Where are the markets now? Let's find out where we are. Tesla was up nicely earlier. Tesla continues to be up $2.51. Going counter market this morning. The Dow is up 28. The NASDAQ is up 40. Percent. Down, down, down. What's wrong with me? I know I'm an optimist. I tend to see things. Anyway, the Dow is down 42. The NASDAQ is down 49. The S&P is down $6.60. Six uh, Tesla up 234. All of the, okay, the Magnificent Seven is mixed with Apple, Google, and Amazon down barely. Meta, Microsoft, and NVIDIA up. Uh, Meta and, Microsoft, and NVIDIA up okay, and Microsoft up just barely. Uh, you've got the Kathy Woods almost all down this morning. Only Square is up. Uh, and that's unusual because, again, what are we going to find out in a minute? The bonds are doing, uh, bonds are rallying this morning unless things have changed. Uh, let's look at the percentages because some of you like that. The Dow is down <laughs> 0.14. The NASDAQ is down 0.35. S&P is down 0.14. And Tesla is up a full percentage point. Okay, let's go check out the bonds. This morning, the bonds right now, the 10-year is, well, it has rebounded a little bit. So oh, things moved again on me here. Okay, we have got the 10-year is down two at 4.072. That is a little bit of a rebound from the pre-market this morning. Um, and it looks like it's tending towards uh, the uh, selling off a little bit, the bonds going down and the uh, interest rates going up. We've got only the uh, the ten year, the seven year, and the five year. However, down this morning, the rest of them are up. Uh, I'm, just, I'm sorry, except for the one month. I, anyway, the 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 two year is basically even this morning, and again, the trend is definitely towards the yields going up a little bit this morning after being down big time yesterday, like over eight percent. Uh, I'm sorry, eight. Uh, basis points yesterday, another 1.5 as we're looking at it right now. All right, let's go take a look at oil, which was rebounding a little bit also this morning. It continues to rebound a little bit, 40 cents. It's at $77.20. Uh, Brent at 82.49, little over that $5 uh, that it has been recently. Natural gas is actually up a little bit this morning, but it has been recently crushed. So, but all of that would indicate maybe a little more activity in the Black Sea. Um, uh, right now, um, they're they're waiting for the U.S. to respond to the drone attack that killed three American soldiers, which, of course, is horrific. Uh, but what is the U.S. going to do? The U.S. has promised retaliation. What is that going to look like? And where is that going to lead? So that's why people are saying there might be a little activity this morning on that. We've got gold up 20 bucks. Um, that would tend to also, uh, you know, that might be about the Fed, but I don't think so because I don't think anybody thinks the Fed's going to move. So if the Fed doesn't move, why would gold be going up? Copper up a little bit this morning. I mean, barely, you could call it even. Um, we've got the uh, Bitcoin up another 362 at 43.4. All right. And then going back as we do to Tesla to see if anything's changed, it is still doing quite nicely up $2.25 against all odds. <laughs> well, again, we saw some articles yesterday that were saying that it is the most oversold, one of the most oversold stocks in the market today, and certainly one of the most oversold of the Magnificent Seven. Um, all right. So Brian White, uh, we went we went deep on Cybertruck's current information yesterday. If you want some on-the-ground reporting from Brian, then you want to take a look at that video. Here is a card for that one. And then and later today, you know, we're going to have Brian back and we're going to talk about Optimus. And then uh, Mr. Gibbs, Nicholas Gibbs, uh, will join us in the late afternoon. Larry, tomorrow after the Fed report, you're going to want to see all of that stuff. So please hit like, subscribe, notify, buy a Cybertruck and join Patreon. And as always, it has been great talking 